It's Monday! Welcome to another episode of Fun Fun Function. Today we are going to talk about the value of straight line code over functions. Breaking inline code out into a function is a very powerful tool, and because functions are such a powerful tool, they tend to be used a lot. In fact, I see people using them even when they don't have to. And that actually lowers the quality of your code, and that is what we are going to talk about today. What you are looking at here is some code from an actual project that I was involved with. Some naming has been changed to protect the innocents. And in that process I did a mistake. Exactly what this code does is not important. But what is important is that it like, handles a key press event, uh, figures out a letter here, uh, then it uh, figures out what the scroll container is, does a bit of magic here, if it only has one scroll container it grabs that scroll container and stuff like that. And if it finds a scroll container it will uh, find the parent of the scroll container, uh, extract the URI from that and if the URI is valid it's going to emit a letter jump request on a central dispatch. So intuitively it feels like I should be doing something with this code. There are no comments and it's just one big function that does quite a bit of things. And that is what happened in this project. We felt that this is a contained unit and this is one unit, so they can probably be broken out into two separate functions, like this. So this is the same on key press event, except that we have broken out the scroll container block here into a get scroll container function. It's the same thing except it's inside a function. And we have also broken out the other logic into a sort list letter jump, and it's in here. To me it feels like we are adding value here. It feels like we have added a bit of documentation by uh, naming these blocks as functions. It feels like we have divided and conquered properly here. It feels like we have uh, broken the problem of the on press event into two things, getting a scroll container and the sort list letter jump. It also feels like we have made the code more readable because, well, we just get a scroll container and then if we have a scroll container we uh, do the sort list letter jump. I mean this little bit of code, I mean this is a lot more readable than this whole thing, right? It really feels like we are doing a good thing here, but when you spend a little bit of thinking about it, it turns out that we don't. Let's talk about the first feeling that we had, that functions feel like you're documenting the code. Looking at the original code, we have taken this block here, and in the uh, variant with the broken out function here, we have given it a name, right? Get scroll container. And that feels like a good thing, right? We have created that this part of the code does this. We have told the future programmer something, right? However, are we really adding something by making this into a function? Couldn't we just do a comment? Something like this, perhaps. Um, get the scroll container and to uh, dispatch the event. Something like that, I don't know. I often hear programmers say that good code should be self-documenting and you shouldn't use too many comments. But when it comes down to it, a comment like this is really the same thing as doing this. The fact that this is a function does not really give you any kind of security. You have just essentially written a comment. A lot of people dislike comments like this because 
they tend to go stale. And by stale, I mean like you might add some code here that will do new things and this description will no longer be accurate. But the thing is that you will still have that problem with, uh, with a function as well. If I add new code here that does things that does not fit into the name of the function, that will, the documentation, the comment, the function comment, or whatever you like to call this kind of pattern, will still go stale. Okay, fine, maybe it doesn't add much in terms of documentation, but what about divide and conquer? By breaking get scroll container out and breaking uh, sort list letter jump out, we have split the problem into two parts, and now we can reason about them independently. Right? Well, not really. Just because you've moved code from one place to another doesn't really mean that you have separated the problem. I mean, there are functions like that. For instance, uh, just look at to lowercase here on uh, line 6. Taking a string and making it lowercase, that is a very well-defined and generic problem that we would not benefit from having inline here, that would just confuse us. However, get scroll container is very specific to the problem that we are solving here. You cannot go into get scroll container and reason about this problem completely independently from what is happening in on key press or the state of the application in general. You could do that when you were writing to lowercase, but you can't really do that with get scroll container. This is this is just an illusion of separation. This is not actual separation of concerns. You have not actually decoupled these functions from anything. Okay, so maybe we haven't really broken the problem up, but haven't we made it more readable? I mean, this is so easy to follow. It just gets the scroll container and then if it has a scroll container, it does a sort list letter job. Well, no, not really. If another programmer is reading this function, it is because they are for some reason trying to figure out what the hell is happening. It it is at such a high abstraction level that it is probably not going to be very useful to them, so they will have to dive into them. So the programmer would have to go into get scroll container and read here, uh, and then we would have to, okay, so there's a selector and they have to find out that that selector comes from there. Uh, okay, it returns scroll container, then you have to go back up here and then the scroll container, okay, it calls sort list letter jump, then I have to find that function, it's down here, and read here, 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 here. Compare this to the straight line function that we had before the refactoring. Here, we can simply read the code from top to bottom and see what happens until the uh, dispatch event is sent. This is much easier to reason about. This jumping back and forth thing, there's actually a word for that. It's called indirection. You might have uh, heard it used in the context of layers of indirection. And what indirection refers to in computer science is that you refer to a value by a reference instead of uh, referring to it immediately. Uh, an example would be the broken out functions that we do here. We refer to this code block, but it might also be uh, variables such as this selector here that we have uh, broken out and I think that personally I mean selector is used in two instances here but I feel like just two instances of a variable is dubious to break out because the person reading this will have to jump back up and I think it might actually be more readable and maintainable code by just inlining it. It might irk you a bit that there is duplication here now. And duplication is generally bad because it means that if you have to change your system, then you have to change it in two places. But with search and replace, in this case, where it's just two instances, it's not that hard, really. 
and we have gained a lot of readability by doing this. It's l a lot easier code to follow. If this selector was used in 10 different places across the app and not just this function, I would really feel differently about it. But in this case, I feel like duplication is a lot better choice than the indirection. Finally, another subtle problem that I would like to talk about is the fact that breaking things out into functions makes it a bit harder for a developer to remove code from your project. And removing code is a very good thing, because as I've talked about before, less code means less bugs. So what do I mean when I say that it gets harder to remove things? Well, in this case, I just wrote get scroll container. It's easy to free for me to reason about this code and it's very small. But over time, I will forget. On key press will grow bigger and new programmers might enter the project. And get scroll container will just be a very small function call in this big project. Now, if anybody wants to change code related to get scroll container, I mean, remove the call or perhaps change the logic inside of it, they now have to do an investigation to find out if other pieces of code uses the get scroll container. Don't get me wrong here, I'm not saying that you should never break things out into functions, but you need to be aware that there is a maintenance cost to doing it. So when you're doing it, it needs to add a lot of value to offset that cost. So let's recap a bit. Breaking things out into functions like this is a layer of indirection. A layer of indirection might be a bad thing or a good thing. In this case, I would say that it, it's a bad thing. This, this really doesn't add anything. That's not to say that indirection is always bad. Sometimes it's very nice to have indirected code, such as uh, to lowercase here. It is very nice not to have to think about the implementation of lowercasing a string when we are solving a completely different problem. And the reason that is nice is because it's a very small and well-defined problem and also a very general problem that is completely separate from what we are trying to solve at the moment. That is different from the get scroll container here, which is not at all generic, not at all well defined and not at all small. And it's definitely related to what we are doing. So we want that close at hand. We don't want to indirect that. If you indirect something like get scroll container that you have to reason about, the programmer that needs to reason and understand your code will need to go up and down and back and forth in your code and that's bad. So the moral of the story is be a bit more restrictive about adding layers of indirection. And this is important because it will feel like you are adding value regardless of whether or not you are. So make sure that you are second-guessing your intuition. Today's video was inspired by a segment in a talk by Jonathan Blow, the uh, developer of Braid. So if you found this idea intriguing, you should check out that talk. I have linked it in the show description. I am the one doing the talking here, but it is your show. So in order to make a good show, I need to know who you are. So kindly introduce yourself in the comments below. Tell me what kind of programmer you are today and how you would like to improve. You have just watched an episode of Fun Fun Function. Fun Fun Function is a weekly show where we try to become more confident and excited about programming by exploring wild ideas, old wisdom and having fun. Speaking of improving, do not miss the next episode. Subscribe down below or follow me on Twitter at mpjme. Until next Monday, stay curious.